Yeah, in the last class, we have derived the equations for uh, design with elutriation, right? With the elutriation, and the last equations were 9, 10, and 11, where we have 1 minus x, x b double bar, is in terms of tau r i and t bar r i, t bar r i, okay, or t m bar r i. Okay, now we have to now really find out whether the t bar i how do you get it? Okay, yeah. And unless you know the t bar i, you cannot calculate the conversions. Or given conversions, you cannot calculate the volume of the reactor. Okay. So these are the problems. And if you notice those uh, uh, equations 9, 10, and 11, actually those are more general equations where you can simplify to the other two conditions. What are the other two conditions? For mixed flow, yeah, constant size, single particles. Okay, if uh, tau bar i, tau bar i equal to simply tau, that means for all particles you have tau same, and t bar i, t bar of uh, t bar r i is again t bar, then you will have the first equation coming. Okay, yeah, the first equation in the sense that you know first condition where we have only mixed flow and uniform size particles. And if you take tau r i alone and t bar same as for all the particles, then that condition becomes again the size distribution of particles, but no elutriation. With elutriation when you take, then this is a more general expression way. That means, what I am trying to say is, even if you are worrying about uh, the examination, you do not have to remember thrice. Okay? It is the same equation what we have. Right, but elutriation you have to do some more work to calculate what will be the the mean residence time for each particle. That is the only thing that is extra coming. So that's why because most of the time till uh, someone points out you may not uh, recognize that the simplicity in the equations. So that's why I am just uh, trying to point out. Okay, please take this equations 9, 10, and 11 cannot be used to predict the conversions because t bar m of R i is not known and this depends on f 1 and f 2 of equation 6. Let me write again equation 6 here for continuity t bar m of r i equal to f 1 w f 2 of r i W R I. This is equation six. Yeah, uh, please take this also. T bar m of R I can be calculated from elutriation data from fluidized beds. Full stop. Elutriation itself is a separate research topic in gas solid fluidization. Okay, next para you can write. In a steady state multiparticle fluidized bed for particles of size R I. The elutriation rate, the elutriation rate, can be written as, can be written as, rate of elutriation elutriation of particle size R i. Is proportional to is proportional to. I think let me write here. Weight of such particles present in the bed. Or in other words, F2 of R i is proportional to W of R i. Okay? Or the proportionality constant uh, 
yeah d is k of r i w w r i where k is elutriation rate constant k is not dependent k is a, a proportionality constant you have to find out that th that depends on what particle size you are telling in fact this is nothing but first order reaction the rate of reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of the particles in the bed okay and the k is the proportionality constant and that is it is uh, it is not changing with this but it changes with for, uh, for each particle Okay, that rate changes for each particle, right? So I will write here. I will come back. Yeah, K of R i is F two of R i divided by W of R i. Okay, so this is equation. Uh, last equation was twelve. Huh? Sorry, eleven. This is twelve. Okay, Nila, you understood, no? This is simply proportionality constant. It is like first order reaction. Okay, so more number of uh, let us say 500 micron particles in the bed means, okay, more rate. Okay, directly proportional to rate. But this one, as I told you, that the fluidization in fluidization, elutriation itself is a separate field. Uh, there are a lot of uh, research papers. Published on elutriation on different conditions for different particles, different flow rates, all this, and a lot of correlations are available. Even now, most of these correlations are not universal correlations that you know all put together. Can I generate one particular correlation? No, because I think still it is a difficult phenomena in a uh, fluidized bed. Shekhar, you are asking something. Uh, sir, if the relativity to the particle present in the bed, can we not relate it to the particles present in the field itself? Would that would that not be more logical? Because unless they are in the field, they won't be in the bed. No, no. See, uh, you have in the bed the particles are falling here, right? So then here you have certain concentration of the particles. Here there is no concentration; it is only simply flow rate, so many kgs per hour. But here I have so many particles per unit volume of the bed. Okay, you heard of hold up of the solids. similarly we can also express this hold up either in grams or you can also express the hold up in terms of fractions you know for example we say that uh, the void age of the packet bed what is the void age of the packet bed void age of the packet bed not volume of the packet bed volume of a packet bed i think you know as chemical engineers you should be able to answer that very quickly empty space in the bed to the total volume of the packet yeah i i asked you that uh, what is the void age in a packet bed i am asking a numerical value 0.4 to 0.4 to 0.4 yeah why, when it is 0.4 when it is 0.6 you cannot say 0.4 to 0.6 if you have sufficient information you could have question me what packing you are talking okay yeah so that means of course you cannot even visualize what is a packet bed that is the simplest uh, system in a chemical engineering uh, industry simplest okay so if you have spherical particles the void age will be around 0.4 if you have some people use uh, rashig rings or uh, some people use bell shadows and all that then depending on even for reactors i am talking okay the catalyst can be made in terms of uh, in the form of rashig rings so then it will, it will be around 0.6 so that void age is nothing but the fraction of volume which is vacant okay so similarly here the the all the hold ups yeah then what we say is even in packet bed because i am telling you about packet bed the reason is that packet bed is the easiest one to imagine right so when you have uh, for example two phase system that is solid as uh, catalyst and fluid is going through this packet bed that means always i can look the look at the packet bed if i have spherical particles i have 60% of the fluid and 40% of solids no the, the other way the other way yeah 60% of solids and 40% of fluid the fluid is within the voids okay yeah so uh, the, the, these are the volume fraction similarly here 
I can have now volume fraction of the gas, okay, volume fraction of the solids, but within that volume fraction of solids, again I have yeah, 500 distribution, 500 particles, 500 micron particles and uh, maybe 1 mm particles or 100 uh, micron particles, all these things together inside the bed. Okay. So, that is why logically it will be the rate of reaction is proportional to the concentration, concentration of solids. Okay. So, that is one of the simplest assumptions, it is empiricism. You assume that and then try to find out uh, the, from the experiment whether what your assumption is right or wrong. Okay. And in many cases in fluidized bed, yes, it is approximately tallying as directly proportional to the solids that are available in the bed, not left, it is all already in the bed. Okay. That is why that is the meaning of minus R A equal to K into C A. C A is the concentration left at any time. Right? Yeah. So, the, this is similar to that, and this is the equation for elutriation constant. Now, if you observe that F2. R i by W r i, did you get that term anywhere in your uh, T bar i? Yeah, here you have. So, that means, if I can estimate my uh, elutriation constant from the experiments, it is only experiments, no theory there. Theory we have only for single particle elutriation. That single particle, what are the assumptions? When you are deriving that single particle terminal velocity, huh? what are you know? ah, Spherical and? Huh? Constant size. Constant. Ah, okay. Other than that? There are many assumptions in fact. Uh, have you know any idea? You heard of terminal velocity, no? Yes, sir. Ah. Prabhu? Sir, I think it is creeping flow. Creeping flow. When you have creeping flow, what will happen? It only creeps. So, because there is no terminal velocity, no? Ah. Yeah, even at Reynolds number 1, if you have very fine particle, it can fluidize. It can uh, go away. Yeah. What are the assumptions when you for the derivation? Okay, spherical particle, and it's very very uh, you know wild uh, imagination in, uh, uh, when you are deriving, because it is one particle in infinite medium. Why? That is very important. Flow is there is only one particle in an infinite medium. Why, why should I assume that? Yeah, no interaction with the other particles, and also no interaction with walls. Okay. Even if you have disturbance with the walls, then your terminal velocity is again the derivation is not valid. Okay. Yeah. But in reality, when do you use in chemical engineering factories only one particle? You can never use. Okay. So, that is why multi particle systems are very, very complicated. That is the reason why we have lot of empirical equations. That empiricism present day academicians, very young academicians are not really appreciating that. It is good. But if you are break away this empiricism and then try to go for actual theory, analytical expressions, wonderful. But in engineering, not many systems are uh, possible to uh, analyze like that. That is why we are still living with empiricism. And even now, you use E transfer coefficients, mass transfer coefficients from those correlations which have been developed in 40s, 50s, 30s. Okay. But theory definitely help us to understand more and more the phenomena, what is really happening. So, that is why these empirical equations we have to use from the experimental data and then if you are able to substitute that equation 12 in 6, equation 12 if you are able to substitute in 6, then we have T bar m of R i equal to 1 by F 1 w plus Elutation constant. Yeah. This equation is uh, 13. Yeah, nice. Okay. But still, I, I am able to substitute for KRA from correlations available in the literature for this term. Right? Yeah. First, uh, for example, for uh, 100 micron particles, 500 micron particles, 800 micron particles, we can substitute. But still, I do not know what is F1. Okay. So, F1, F2, if I know, F1 we can calculate, and then still, uh, you know, so that is why what we have to do further is that these are all, of course, this equation is already known to you. 
Let us take this equation, which has been already written f of r i plus f 2 of r i. What is this equation number? What was that equation number? 2. Okay. Yeah. So, now I will substitute here equation 12 here for f 2. So, f of r i equal to f 1 r i for f 2, if I am substituting equation 12, then this will be k of r i into w of r i. This is equation, uh, there is no equation I think, at the end I will give that. Yeah. So, this w of r i also can be written in terms of we have another equation, uh, you can check this equation w of r i can be written as w by f 1 into correct f 1 of r i. This is equation number 3, written slightly differently that is all. Because w of r i also I do not know. So, that is why I just would like to substitute this one in terms of w and f 1. So, so that I will have f 1 everywhere, then we can try to find out what is happening. Okay? We can estimate what is f 1. So, that is why substituting equation 3 in uh, yeah, above okay, that equation. Um, I have okay. Let me put 14. Yeah, right there. I am not writing that. At least you have to write. You know, substituting equation 3 in 14. What you get and rearranging. I am just jumping the steps. And rearranging, what you get is f not uh, not f not f1 of R i equal to f naught of r i divided by 1 plus k of r i to w by f 1. Can you please check this, this equation? Yeah, it is very simple only. So, this is equation number uh, yeah. I will write here instead of that you know, 14 a and I will write here 14 b. Okay? That is good now. Yes. So, now th this one is f 1 of 1 particle size. So, if I want to get total f 1, I should take the summation of all that. Okay? F 1 for example, again I am telling f 1 sigma if I say you will immediately confuse. So, I have to say that this is f 1 for 100 particle 100 micron particles uh, maybe 500 micron particles and 800 micron particles if i have that uh, distribution okay so i can uh, write f1 equal to sigma of f of ri which is also equal to sigma of all particles f of ri f not ri 1 plus w by f 1. Yeah. So, this is the one, this is equation number 15. What our procedure is, now using that equation we have to solve f 1. f 1 is present on both sides now. Okay? So, that means, you have to guess, you have to guess a value, calculate this and that must be equal to your guess value. And the data what you get is f naught r i do you know? Yeah, that is the feed. So, you know and uh, w hold up will be given for a already existing reactor. It should be given. Otherwise, you have to calculate w for a given conversion, okay? one of them. Okay. So, 
and uh, now f 1 I do not know, k r i you know, it is empirical, uh, empirical correlation. So, you know in this equation everything except f 1, so you guess f 1 and then l h s must be equal to r h s under those conditions you just stop when, the, when both are same, then you will have that f 1. So, using that f 1 what do you do? You have to calculate t bar of t bar of yeah of a particular size. So, then I know w, I know f 1, I know k r i, I can calculate and from this I will go to now equations 9, 10 and 11. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. What are the things you have in equation 9, 10, 11? What are the parameters you do not know? That is all, only two. Okay. Do you know tau? You said we do not know. Abhi no, you said that. Huh? No. Uh, Swami, you said that. Huh? You said, okay, yeah. You do not know tau? What is tau? Tau, 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 tau. Tau. Tau is for a single particle where from kinetics you already get that. Tau is for single particle. Okay. Single particle kinetics already you know, whether it is following shrinking core model, uh, film control or diffusion control or ash control. That is why you have those equations already. So, tau is already known to you. right? And T bar m, you are calculating for given size, if you know what is F 1 and what is W and what is K R I. So, then you can substitute these two and calculate X bar. Okay? Good? Yeah. So, that is why what we do here is, how to calculate F 1. Step 1 is very simple only, you will laugh at the end. Choose F 1 that is guess, okay? uh, guess F 1 value and substitute in 15 in equation 15. Yeah, and step 2 is match L H S and R H S. If it is not, then again you have to guess another value and again uh, do that till you get both are equal and then of course, you can calculate the uh, yeah, you, you can cal you can choose that F 1. From that F 1, you go to 13. Okay? Uh, I think probably you have to write that. I think there is one problem which I have given uh, like this in the assignment which I have given. Stars you have put no, at the end somewhere. Elutriation and all that also is given. So, I think you please try that. They are very beautiful problems. Particularly non-catalytic reaction design is wonderful design. It is very, very good. And in fact, uh, I do not have much time, you know, because I now we have to go to catalytic reactions. From there, you have to go to uh, catalytic reactor design, and then you have to go to fluidized bed reactor design, then you have to go to slurry reactor. So, I am not able to take some more complicated cases, like even of, uh, even of course, packed bed, we know, is a uh, system is equivalent to your uh, plug flow. Okay? Yeah. So, but I think it is a beautifully, uh, you know, it is a transient problem. I can put, for example, the non catalytic reaction, the iron ore in packed bed and then send hydrogen. But I can give those problems as an analytical thinking problem. No, really, if you are able to solve that, that will be beautiful. What, what I may be asking is that I have a packed bed, batch solids, iron ore, and then I send hydrogen. Draw the concentration profiles of gas as well as solids. Solids means X B okay, and X A or C A. How the concentration changes? in the bed, if it is co-current or it can be counter current. Okay? So, the particles are reacting with the time, that is the transient phase, it is not steady phase. Whereas, gas is in continuous phase, steady flow, but the both the profiles you should be able to draw. Okay? Uh, that gives beautiful analytical thinking, I tell you, beautiful. Ana that means, unless you understand the whole uh, packet bed and then uh, the phenomena that is going on inside the packet bed, you cannot draw. I think I have been telling you last semester also, I was telling you the simplest problem which you can imagine is, okay, I have put a iron ore ball 
uh, spherical may be 5 centimeters or 2 inches or 5 inches or 6 inches ball in a furnace where I have the uh, hydrogen continuously filled up. Okay. So, now can you draw the temperature initially when it is just uh, because the, the reaction has to have sufficient temperature. So, I just took the ball and then put inside the furnace has 500 degree centigrade let us say the furnace has 500 degree centigrade then how the first of all temperature profiles are changing inside the particle once it attains 500 degrees then the reaction may start after reaction starting how again the concentration profiles are changing that means of course we are assuming uh, the hydrogen is constant throughout that is not uh, a problem but around that you may have film right so now you have to draw the concentration profile of the gas and also concentration profile of the solid concentration profile means x b conversion profile so these are wonderful problems i think you know instead of going to google and then searching all nonsense uh, things you can just sit down in your room if you don't have anything just uh, take a pen and paper okay now let me draw the concentration profiles in a distillation column or in a heat exchanger or for example in a pipe okay velocity profiles that is the simplest one. No? Yeah. So, if you are able to think about that, then it is really, I mean, you know, that only shows that you have passion in your uh, chosen field. I know you may be laughing at me, this fellow does not have any work, so that is why he is telling all the time. Yeah, and I am not able to change their faces, I think, B tech faces till now. I think, you know, they are stunned. I, I, absolutely, I think maybe stones may smile sometime, but I think no. I do not know what is happening in our BTEC system, my God. They have that skepticism all through that you know looking at the teacher that this idiot will be talking something and we will be just sitting and then doing whatever we want. Prabhu, how did you develop that? Not you personally I am talking, in general. No, because I want to learn that, I want to know why people are so skeptical about any subject. Mechanical engineers complain the same way, civil engineers complain the same way, of course, chemical engineering you know. Yeah? So, any system, I think you know, computer science earlier are supposed to be very good, okay, and the computer science and uh, what is that other one? Electrical and electronics. Now, they have also become stones, and we are not talking about 100 percent, uh, there may be always 4 or 5 out of 100, that is nothing, statistically 0, correct? No, I mean, when I have 100 people in the class, 90 people are, 95 people are just heckling at me, only 5 people are listening, I do not even see them, I do not even see them, no, that is one drop of uh, good water in a ocean. How do I see that good water where I have to go and take? Okay. Yeah, this is what I think. Why, Abhinav? What is the reason? And it pains me a lot. And, and they are, uh, I mean, most of you also, I do not only blame them. So, do not laugh. You are also like that. Okay. <laughs> you are also like that from the, you know, but you are not writing this exam, some other exam you are writing. Okay. So, I, I do not know, except uh, school education, beyond that, we are not learning anything. I can guarantee that. Even if you are learning, that will be delta x. But if you have passion, definitely those people are learning. Now, Prabhu got 99.9999, I do not know how many nines you have there. Okay? Why? Because his passion is not engineering, his passion is something else. No, like that many. They can do wonderful work. After getting something, you should put your heart and soul into that particular field. So, that is why whatever you get, I think you should be able to put your heart and soul and then do it. Because I do not get something, I cannot go to every day then drink. What is the use by the way? Okay. Yeah. So, then what is the use? I say you have come here with a purpose and I think I can tell you 70, 80 percent of these two faculty members are really enthusiastic to tell you something. Because all this enthusiasm was killed by the by seeing the faces where uh, uh, you know stone faces or wooden faces. Okay. Yeah. So, I think that life in this in the face is totally go out the moment they enter the class. And of course, when the class is over, very happy, just go and start laughing. Right? The reason is that everywhere, every minute, every second, you are guided by someone or other. Either your brother, either your sister, or mother, or father. Nowadays, I think this idiotic uh, cell phones are there. So, the, the moment they think that you are not doing the, what they want, they will send SMS, do this. So, that is why every field and every field has thrills in, uh, in that particular field, but only thing is you are not able to see and sometimes as teachers we are not able to exert you also, that is also there. But nowadays I think you know I feel it is 50-50, 50 
but the 50 50 you know if it is 60 50 60 percent for students and 40 percent faculty when it is going beyond that then you know the enthusiastic people also will die enthusiasm the enthusiasm of the faculty members also is killed i told you, you know five people may be listening 95 people may be sleeping mentally okay so then uh, you cannot you cannot uh, talk to i think you know that is very easy to talk to empty chairs rather than people sitting and lot listening to you really that is easy for us once you have the uh, you know forced marriage this is only forced marriage because you may not like chemical engineering in the beginning okay but once you came to chemical engineering you are supposed to love that again otherwise you only feel uh, very bad you feel very bad at the end if someone asking you you are a chemical engineer do you know this you may not show because we are all actors from um, you know birth to death we have only act in between only two stages where you don't act is before birth after death okay because my god i think we have a degree but we are not able to answer this man like simple question like in our village some people usually ask me what do you do as a chemical engineer we don't know because no one told us so then only vaguely uh, we used to tell that no no we make uh, medicines okay so we make uh, uh, fertilizers we make cement that kind of thing they are very polite i think you know they, they have not asked how do you make cement okay <laughs> So, if they have asked how do you make cement gone, <laughs> because chemical technology goes long time forgotten. Okay, so that is why, yeah, Shekhar. Comes from two aspects. One is understanding, the second is visualization. Both go always hand in hand. Uh, unless you have a visualization, you cannot understand the subject. When you say fluidized bed on the on the uh, uh, board, it is very difficult to visualize what a fluidized bed is. Unless and until uh, someone has physically seen it. Uh, you say alliteration. Alliteration is easy to understand as a word, but not as a concept. When Unless you do experiments on your own, unless you see the setup, it's very difficult to visualize. And yeah, but I think you would have simplified uh, things. But you know, can't you imagine a particle just going out of the bed? <laughs> but no, what do you mean? Like? Yeah, I think you know, <laughs> see, if you are not able to even imagine that, I think absolutely we don't have any imagination. That, sir. Ah. So, from the first day itself, you, if you are asking the person to visualize a single particle, he may not be able to visualize. Some Everyone has their own speed, sir. If someone from day one you start that person to visualize that, he may not be able to visualize that. And after a few point, if he is still not able to visualize, somewhere it will shatter his confidence also that I am not visualize, able to visualize such a simple thing. How will I visualize uh, the bigger things? Uh, which which are coming my bigger way. things no one asks you to visualize because it's very difficult to, you know for example three three dimensional diagrams is very very difficult to understand we are not going to that level of visualization it is simple you know particles floating in water you cannot uh, visualize particles floating in air you cannot visualize okay and then one particle or you know few particles just going out because every day also you are seeing i think when you have a lot of wind don't you see particles just flying off dust and all that. Okay? That is what is the alliteration. And that is why I give you so many simple examples, so that your visualization is simple. Simple examples for, for all my complicated problems, I will try to tell, you know, particularly uh, in my teaching, I do all the, all the time. Like plug flow, no one can visualize so easily. Then why should I tell uh, Tirupati Q? Sir, even Tirupati Q I cannot visualize means what can I do? <laughs> and not only Tirupati Q, okay, you would have not gone to, many people may would have not gone to Tirupati. Okay, but I have told you even uh, road traffic. Okay, every car going exactly at same speed, every vehicle moving exactly same speed, and I told you also another example. You know, conveyor belt. So many examples. If I gave you also, if you are not able to visualize, no, sir, you have to show me how the molecule is moving inside the I'm tube. I'm coming from a general subject point of view. Yeah, that is why as a teacher, as a teacher, we give you very simple examples where you are capable of visualizing. I do not know, I think in every class also, any teacher will try to tell some examples, I say. In any class, examples are part of the teaching. So, that is why so many examples, I, I bring movies, I bring so many things to use, so that you know you, what you know. Because I think the one simplest definition of teaching is taking student from known to unknown. Okay? Traffic is known to you. Okay? So, I am taking from traffic to unknown, uh, the buffer, plug flow reactor. So, like that many examples which I give. Even sir, plug flow we have visualized during sarang and all. 
Plug flow, where did you visualize, Sarang? Only mixed flow. Only mixed flow you should have visualized. Oh, Q, yeah, exactly. Uh, that is before entering pro shows. Uh, that is true. And mixed flow, where did you see? Inside them. Yeah. So then you see, very simple. You never forget again mixed flow. That means a guy can be anywhere inside OAT. Any instant of time. <laughs> Any instant of time. So that is what is mixed flow. So that is the kind of simple examples we give so that you can easily imagine. Like we are entering and we are and then jumping, are jumping are walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, Anand Kumar visualization expanded. <laughs> Very good. So like that only, I say, like that only. Slowly you have to because all the disease with the students is that if the if they are not getting marks, they think that you know they don't like the subject. And marks and liking subject is totally different. Okay. But anyway, I think nice, I think I could talk to you, this one, I think it is bothering me a lot, really bothering me a lot. I think as you told, uh, told maybe 95 people are not listening to me, means I, may, I would definitely would have exaggerated, may, but I can add only another 10, that is all, 15. No, this is what, what we observe in uh, particularly 100 classes, because earlier I used to be teaching only B.Tech classes, I think really I enjoyed those classes, wonderful students, out of 30, maybe just one or two students were not attentive. That is all, but other I think you can get 28 students beautifully attentive all the time. I am not exaggerating out of 30 at that time, because even though they do not like it, there are also people who have been pushed by parents even at that time, but once they have taken, they were at least doing that minimum thing, but now the, even that minimum things are not there. That is why Dean AC has always again plug flow Q for the people coming, sir, I have completed only two credits this semester. So, how many uh, uh, semesters I will take to complete? You will take 100 semesters, <laughs> yeah, because 200, 200 uh, credits they have to finish approximately, 165 of course, yeah. so like that. Okay, anyway, I think I will stop here. Tomorrow we will do multi-stage fluidized bed, you know, tanks in series model, using the same thing. Okay, you run now.